Hey everybody, Matt here with Halloween Daily News. I hope you're all doing well today. I am super excited because I just had an amazing conversation with a living legend and a personal hero, stuntman, actor, and Halloween franchise icon, Dick Warlock. Of course, we talked about this year's 40th anniversary of Halloween 2, in which he played Michael Myers. We also talked about Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, but that's just the beginning. We discussed highlights from throughout his entire illustrious career, from Disney, to the Green Berets, to Jaws, to The Thing, to The Abyss, to Spider-Man, and so much more. It's an epic conversation and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So here we go. Here's part one of my exclusive new interview with Dick Warlock. Thank you for being here, sir. Um, thank you so much for doing this. It is just so great to see you and, and to speak to you again. And um, I know you recently had a birthday, so happy belated birthday. Thank you. And I, and I hope you had a, um, a good celebration there. Um, I got my two shots already. Awesome. Awesome. The shots. Nobody, uh, I mean, I was going to come on with this thing here again. Nobody, you know, you got it. Is that it? Is it upside down? Or yeah. Right? You know, I had to, that's, that's. There you go. COVID mask. <laughs> that, that's the new mask you wear now. Instead of the Myers mask, now it's the, the COVID mask. But yeah. yeah. It's all right. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear you got the shots and, and, and that's going well. Yeah. And Kathy you guys are healthy. And uh, she's doing a couple of weeks for the second one. Okay. So I wanted to start off with, before we get to uh, your, your career and some of the, the highlights throughout your career, um, I wanted to go back and just ask you about celebrating Halloween itself. Um, when you were a kid, do you remember celebrating? And, and also later on with, with like your own kids, um, did, did you guys celebrate Halloween? Oh yeah, we always trick or treated. We we didn't have the all the the stuff, the animatronics, uh, you know, the this and that that they have today. The yeah. full size figures of people that do funny things, and you know, we didn't have all that. Uh, we'd put a pumpkin out, carve a pumpkin. I remember doing that with my mother, you know, and my sister and I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we celebrated Halloween. It was always fun. A big bag, a paper bag of candy, you know, or a basket. One or the other. We had a basket in the one one year or two years. But yeah. Did Did you have a a favorite Halloween candy that you remember? No, no, I don't have too many memories way back then. You know. Yeah. Uh, they're fading. <laughs> <laughs> They're in there. Occasionally, they'll pop up, but yeah, yeah. How, how about celebrating Halloween with your kids? Did, were they into it too? Did they like going trick or treating yeah. and get well, dressed up? <clears throat> because my wife, with my son Billy and my daughter Rhonda, were we were separated or divorced, and she lived a long way away, so we didn't get together for that particular holiday very often. Uh, it, it, it came in. In, during the school year and they, they, yeah. they were you know they weren't up with me during that yeah. time we came in the summer so yeah I don't know how they celebrated that yeah it didn't fall on weekends all the time either and uh, like no. you said right in the middle of the school year so yeah so um again how did uh how did you get into acting into into show business and and then ultimately how did that lead into the stunt work that that um you've done so much of you know it's funny you ask about that because i before we opened the zoom thing up or uh i was in on my computer here making some edits in my life story and i was right about the the place in corriganville when janet my first wife suggested after i was falling down the hill hills off the rocks and there's a set there a Mexican village called the Vendetta Village I was going down the staircase on the way back to the car at the end of the day I did a fall down a hill and I came up brushed myself off and she's looking at me she says Dick why don't you just go down and ask the guy for a job <laughs> and I don't it was like kind of a throwaway throwaway line so yeah. said, good idea so I went down there I went into the, the finally found out he was in the uh, bar which has stayed open, you know, 
And I found him and I approached him and asked for a job. And he said, nah, I'm kind of busy, kid. Can you come back next weekend? Well, it was 55 miles one way from where I lived up at Quarterville, two lane roads. Yes, sir, I'll be here. So I came back the following Saturday and I approached him again. And he said, can you come back tomorrow? I did this three weekends in a row. Funny said, you're a persistent old bastard, aren't you? <laughs> I said, yes, I am. He said, okay. He said, uh, do you have any Western clothes? I said, no. He said, go to a Goodwill store and buy a vest and a plaid shirt or something and, you know, a hat. So I did that and showed up. And I started by walking in the background and I thought, I don't want to do this. I want to play shoot 'em up and be in the shows. I don't want to be there. So it took a couple of weeks. One Saturday morning, one of the guys that played a part, and we used to do stories like the gunfight at the OK Corral and Billy the Kid Becomes an Outlaw. There was one called The Hanging of Henry Plummer. Okay. And uh, this fellow didn't show up. And so the two fellows that I really got to know well, they, they were like second and third in command. They got to talking and they said, how about Dick doing it? And uh, so they gave me a hat. They gave me a, a, a gun belt and a gun, and, I, and during the thing, bang, I get shot. I rolled down the hill into, into a little creek that was there, and oh, they, they went, wow, man. The rest of the day, I was like the lead guy, and from then on, I did Billy the Kid and all three of those things. I did Billy Clanton and the gunfight at the old cop, OK Corral. I was kind of a little star within, <laughs> within that little group. It's kind of neat signing autographs and stuff. And that was my first experience with that. And uh, that lasted about a year and a half. And then I moved on. And and I don't know where you want to go from here with the interview. As far as that goes, I can go on to meeting Disney at Walt Disney. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I Yeah, I just want to, want to go right on through if that's all right. Um, back, in, back in the beginning, uh, when I first got in. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way. I went to work at a stable where I was mucking stalls, you know, cleaning the crap out of stalls. And the owner was a friend of the guy who got me into the business, actually, Jerry Vance. He was one of the two guys at Corriganville that suggested it, that I do that little fall down the hill. Uh, he suggested to Bill Ward, who owned that stable, and he was also writing, producing, and directing a movie with Marty Robbins, Mm -hmm. Marty. I got a picture here of Marty, but I don't know what I did with it. Uh, Marty Robbins is a country singer out. Uh, El Paso was a song where he was big. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. Uh, so it gave me the opportunity because Bill said, yeah, no, no problem. He wrote the letter to the Screen Actors Guild, which got, got me in. That's okay. all. I mean, it was like breaking into Fort Knox to get into the Screen Actors Guild. You just didn't do it like that in the old days. It's yeah. easy now. But so I got in the Screen Actors Guild and I putzed around a job here and a job there, but I wasn't really doing well. And we, I worked two cards. I was working as an extra or stand in mostly. I didn't do the background stuff. Uh, but uh, I, I showed the casting director at Disney Studios a little photograph of myself. Two days later, I get a call from Disney that they want me to come in and do a little thing for them. I said, okay. So I showed up. And when I walked in, Walt Disney was sitting at, on, a, on the front of his desk. And, and the cameras were, were set up. And we were in the wardrobe department. And the thing I was supposed to do was stand with my back to the camera. The wardrobe lady's there. She handed me the stuff. I'm putting the hat on and the, the clothing. And it's a rebel outfit. Kurt Russell, as a kid, he was 17 years old. <laughs> was it was it was called How Do You Make a Man Out of an 18 year I mean a 16 year old boy? It was Willie and the Yank was the name of the show. Okay. Kurt played Willie. Now this all happened before I ever met Kurt. I had no idea. So we rehearsed one time, and Walt calls me over. He says, "Hey, son, come here." So I walked over and I said, "Yes, sir." Now I'm looking at him, you know, he said, uh, now you're not going to upstage me, are you? You know what that means? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
take the attention. Yep. For, for those that don't know, but take, <laughs> take the attention away from him. Mm -hmm. I said, would I do that? <laughs> and I winked at him and I turned around and walked away. <laughs> I didn't know this for eight years, but he turned to Art Vitarelli, the director, and said, I want to get everything you can get on this guy, this kid, because I'm going to make a star out of it. I had no idea for eight years. Walt had passed away by then, and Art got me in the office because Art and I became very good friends. And he was a mentor to me, Art Vitarelli at Disney. And uh, he said, I'm going to tell you something. I hope it doesn't, doesn't bother you, but said Walt on that particular day, and he told me the story, he's going to make a star out of you. Wow. <laughs> that, that's something, just to be considered for something like that. Yeah. And that was the start of it. Walt passed away. They kept me at that studio for 10 years. I worked with Kurt. I met him there, worked on all those Disney movies that, you know, the, now you see them, now you don't. And, and I went in on to do Cap from Outer Space with Ken Berry and it was great. It was like going to college for 10 years. So that's pretty much how I got into it. Well, um, just a little bit more on the, on that time with Disney, because um, some of those films, uh, like I know, it, I think it was around that time you worked on uh, Herbie the Love Bug and some of those films. Oh, and um, Herbie, I, I doubled Buddy Hackett and Michelle Lee, Benson Fong, all three of them, uh, and, and Carrie Lofton, who was a famous car guy from back in the silent days, came forward. He oh, was wow. driving Herbie. He, okay. he, I was watching him, everything he was doing. Okay. He, he wasn't really open with how he did this and how he did tr the tricks. But he kind of warmed up as the movie went along, right? So now the second one comes up, part two. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Art hired me to do the doubling of... Uh, Helen Hayes, and she's okay. a famous theatrical artist, since passed away, God bless her. Uh, I was to double her, so I did blind driving, but then came uh, the Monte Carlo movie. They were already over in, in Paris getting ready for shooting, and they hired Remy Julien, who is the French uh, Carrie Lofton, the, 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 the oh, okay. real car guy over there. He did all the commercials and all that stuff. He was driving this modified Camaro thing called a laser. I don't, have you seen Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo? No? It's been many years. Uh, well, you're probably, we're going, oh, I oh. Yeah. <laughs> changing the diapers when that was on. But anyway. <laughs> uh, I get a call that Carrie can't go. He was scheduled to go over there and double Dean Jones. And, and Art said to him, this is a story that Art related to me. I asked him, who should, who should I get? And he said, take Warlock. He can do it. Mm -hmm. I went, wow, Carrie, thank you. So I went over there and did that show. So that was, that was three of them in a row. And then, yeah. uh, you know, it, it was just a, a great time at Disney. Great time. I bet. I bet. And, um, what, was it around that time, uh, I guess, that uh, somewhere around there that you did Escape to Witch Mountain? Because I, I found that interesting that um, you worked on that with Donald Pleasance and would, of course, later you guys would uh, face off in Halloween, too, all those years later. Yeah. Yeah. I found him to be a gentleman. Uh, people have said that he had a, a, a sense of humor, but I never saw it. <laughs> he came on the set, he was ready to work. He knew your yeah. dialogue and mine. And, and really, the consummate, I, I said that before in interviews, the consummate professional. You, mm -hmm. know, you couldn't find anybody that was better to work with. Never mm -hmm. had a complaint, was always ready when they were ready. And, and the rest is history for me with him. He, it was, you know, I've been in the presence of some of those people that I really respect and admire. Yeah. And not many of the fans get an opportunity to do that. And that's, I'm a fan of a lot of people, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I got to be with them. Yeah. Yeah. I remember um, in, in our, our first interview in 2015, um, I asked you who, who one of your personal heroes was that, that you really... Uh, fanned out about meeting and you told me about um, Elvis about how you were such a big Elvis fan and how you got to meet him years later uh, more than once I believe and um, and that was a, a moment that helps you relate to when 
fans at some of these conventions meet you now. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can understand it, you know. Yeah. In 1956, Pan Pacific Auditorium in Los Angeles, sitting next to Dolores Hart, who is his co-star in King Creole and Loving You. Oh, wow. Yeah. Two, two or three rows up were Ricky Nelson and, and David Nelson from the Aussie. Aussie no Harris. way. <coughs> yeah. Wow. But I mean, it, and, and then years later, I got to meet him and, you know, work with him and sing on the soundtrack of that movie, uh, Easy Come, Easy Go, which I thought. The end of the day, the assistant director come up and said, Dick, uh, before you go, he said, we're having about a half a dozen people hang back and do some vocals for the soundtrack for the movie. Would you, are you interested? Well, that was, I mean, to sing with Elvis on the movie. <laughs> so I got to do that. They handed me a card with the lyrics on it and he said, it, wow. it wouldn't take long, we'll just buzz through it. And you know, he did the, uh -huh. yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Wow. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, maybe you wouldn't mind telling the story again of, about um, when I think you, you, uh, through a football with Elvis uh, one time meeting him? Well, that um, was on the same movie. Okay, that was on that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, 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 when I showed up at the studio, I had no idea, which happens a lot. I was just told <laughs> to report to Paramount Studios 7.30 in the morning. So so I go in and it, you open the door and it's dark and it was, it was like a hallway. One was a solid wall and then this had an open place in it as I walked by and there's a big huge swimming pool in there well it turns out they did some of Elvis's scuba diving stuff in the thing I didn't know that at the time nice. but but I'm walking and I see this figure coming the other way and he's got <laughs> I'm looking for the coffee and the bagels and the cream cheese and you know locks and whatever and he's coming and as I get closer he turns and stops at the coffee thing and, they, and it's Presley so I told him this story about meeting him or meeting two of his guys at Paramount, I mean, uh, American Airlines years, not, well, not years before, but before that. And they invited me to come down to the studio. Well, I did that three days in a row and never did get in. And uh, I never got to see Omar Fike, who was one of his guys. He said, yeah, I'll get you in over there. Well, shoot. He probably walked up and said, well, I sure blew up the, the wind up. That guy's chalky shorts. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he thought it was funny and Come on, we went out and thrown the football around with some other guys, you know. It wasn't just me. But but still, that was pretty uh yeah. had, had to be pretty surreal for you. It is, it is. I mean, like meeting Kennedy uh, when he was campaigning for president. Oh wow. Getting, not, getting my knocked on my butt by Muhammad Ali, you know. Uh, well tell me tell me about that. I haven't I haven't heard about that. You ever heard that one? No. NBC Studios where in Burbank where they do the Johnny Carson show. I'm in the you have you have the main building, you have a ramp that comes down into the parking lot, and Johnny's car is always right here. Across the parking lot and up some stairs is the commissary. I come from the commissary and it's I got it's pouring rain. And I've got just a jacket on, no, no raincoat. I'm running along with my head down, and I get close to the ramp, boom! And I go down and I look up and here's a, a head this big on a little bit smaller body. I thought, oh, and it's Muhammad Ali, who I saw in one of his very first fights and followed his career all the way through. So I'm a fan of Muhammad, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's down, he pulls me up. He's with two, two of his guys. They, he said, my kid, are you all right? Or what? I, you know, I can't <laughs> do his voice, but I said, yeah. And we're shaking hands. He said, you sure you're all right? Yeah, okay. And they, they went off and I'm going, wow, you know, I was a fan, <laughs> you know? I just, yeah. my, not an idol, but a guy that I admire, I, you know. So anyway, that's my uh, getting my getting knocked on my butt by Muhammad Ali. When I tell that story, I lead it in. I was knocked on my ass once by Muhammad Ali. <laughs> really? They think I'm in the gym or something, you know, duking or bang. No, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was it was right there at the time. Were you just there working, filming it uh, at the time, or, or no, no, no? I was over there, and I don't even remember why, why I was there, but I had been in the commissary eating. And and then Kennedy, you said meeting Kennedy. Um, I haven't heard that story. 
that was that was a, a quick handshake and how do you do and you know when he was he, he was campaigning okay yeah for presidency and i had never voted before you know i was 21 i think 20 mm -hmm. or 21 something like that mm -hmm. and, and i had to go down to meet this guy because he was right there in my neighborhood you know yeah yeah, couldn't <clears throat> couldn't miss out the opportunity. Well, a lot of other there. people shook his hand too. You know, you know sure. how they hand you and all that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to insinuate it's a private meeting. <laughs> right. And we had a beer over at the. Right. Concert, you know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That, that time I was I was doing shots with Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you always want to? I, I know you were always a fan of the westerns. You told me before. But did you always know that you wanted to to um, work in film? Show business somewhere. Okay. When, I, when, when we left California, I mean, Ohio in 1954, February, mm -hmm. uh, I had my six gun and my holster on my side. <laughs> I didn't have a cowboy hat. I wore one of the beanies that everybody wears today. You know, just a wool beanie. <laughs> I got a photo of that someplace. And I'm standing on a rock. Driving to California, I, I wore my eyes out, looked at the side of the road as it went by looking for rattlesnakes uh, <laughs> through Texas and Arizona. <laughs> and, and, and then I knew that when I left that I wanted to get into the entertainment field. I love to sing, and Elvis got me started with that, singing along with him. Mm -hmm. Another story about him was this, this buddy of mine in, in, I think it was 56, uh, my mother and stepdad had gone to Las Vegas for the weekend, and Pudgy Johnson was his name, and, and uh, he brought this record over the house. He said, Dick, you got to hear this guy. He's, he's great. So he puts it on, and it's Heartbreak Hotel. And on the flip side is I was the one. All weekend long, he, lo he loaned it to me, and my sister and I danced in the living room. We wrote the road <laughs> to Heartbreak Hotel, yeah. right? And from that moment on, I was hooked on Elvis Presley. That's what started the Elvis Presley thing. Well, when my parents get home, that, that I said, Mom, you got to hear this record. And I put the record on, and her and Doug, my stepdad, was standing there listening to it. And she said to him, she said, Doug, isn't that the kid we saw at the sideburns in Las Vegas? It turns out that's the trip that he made to Vegas, and he was a flop. They didn't know how to deal with this guy with the sideburns and the shaky leg. And <laughs> so he didn't, he didn't do well in Vegas. Lord knows he went back and did the Hilton and the whatever and then was a smash hit for mm -hmm. years. But, <clears throat> but that's that's another little story. Should I write a book? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, I got, I mean, I, it, it's something that I'm seriously contemplating lately because I, I had a writer that you know Kane Hodder, who Kane mm -hmm. is. He yep. wrote a book. Yep. I just finished reading it, and it's really a good book for anybody that's a, a Hodder fan, even if you're not. Mm -hmm. This guy had a rugged life. It was yeah. not easy for Kane. Yeah. If you ever get a chance, read the book. It's it's woo. Anyway, uh, the 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 guy that co-wrote it with him has approached me about doing one. I put him off. This has been three or four years ago, and. And I'm reconsidering that maybe I'll do it. I just know, I don't know if I have anything to really of, of interest, but people that have, have talked to me said, yeah, you, you do. So, oh, yeah. Consider yeah. It. yeah, I think the audience is definitely there. People like me, I mean, love these stories and um, cherish these memories that you have. And because you were on the set, I mean, I've got a list of so many amazing filmmakers and films that you have been around and been a part of over the years. Steven and, um, Spielberg and James Cameron. And, and yeah, yeah. I mean, they, De Niro all the time. Who's De Niro's guy? De Niro? Who's De Niro? Oh, Scorsese, yeah. Scorsese. Yeah, no. Just, uh, <coughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron can't stand me. Really? And, uh, and, and John Carpenter, he, he won't even speak to me. Really? Oh yeah, we we all have issues, you know. I didn't. I I tried my best with Jim, but Jim is a perfectionist. He knows your job, my job. The guy that does craft service, the honey wagon guy with the you know, 
he knows everybody's job. He started out with, with uh, anyway, I can't remember his name, the guy that did movies cheap long ago, but he learned everybody's job because he did it, you know, mm -hmm. the hard way. He's a bright guy. But I, I sent him a letter at the end of the movie, I, I, the, the Abyss, uh, and said, mm -hmm. you know, next to Spielberg or alongside Spielberg, you're probably the smartest director and the best director I've ever worked with. Wow. Don't hear me again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with you. Wow. <laughs> Say I've never heard from him again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was. <laughs> I don't even know if he got the letter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask you about working on on the abyss, but I guess that. Uh, um, it so was okay. It was okay. It was it was an experience. I met yeah. my one. I went met Kathy on that while I was on that. Movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was a blessing. The Lord has yeah. blessed me in many ways. I don't know what anybody's particular religious beliefs are, but. I have I have a guy in my corner. I know where I'm going when I die, and uh, all yeah. the rest is good. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so, so the abyss was um, a a good experience, but but tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had an experience with Ed Harris uh, after after that movie. Now, I don't want to get in too deep to all these stories, or I don't have anything to tell them. <laughs> That's right. Save it for the book, right? <laughs> You know, your show is, your thing here is very popular. So a lot of people are, would hear these stories and I don't want them all to get out. That's right. We don't, we don't want them all. We don't want them all out. You got to, got to save a couple. Yeah. Um, I read that one, read that one. <laughs> Why not buy this thing? You know. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah. You got to. <laughs> your list. Say what? Keep going with your list. <laughs> Um, well, I, I, I know um, when you uh, worked with John Wayne on the Green Berets, that, that um, was a, had to have been a big thrill, being such a fan of the Westerns that, that was you were. And, I didn't you know, know what I was doing. I was home in bed, and, and the, the casting director calls me up. He said, hey, it's Martell. I said, yeah, yeah, I just, I just woke up. He said, I needed you yesterday, man. Get down there as quick as you can. So I get myself together. I go down. I go get over to wherever wardrobe. Go over. Guy met me and said, "Are you warlock?" I said, "Yeah." He says, "Come with me." And he took me to wardrobe. Then he got the clothes on me, put the bray on me, and I thought, "What the hell is this?" And <clears throat> on the way into the door, he said, "The Duke wants to meet you." <laughs> the Duke. There's only one Duke. That's John Wayne. They're down in Alabama shooting Green Beret. What? I walk in, and there's. Bruce Cabot, who was in almost every one of his movies, Richard Liu was the Asian guy sitting at the table, and the Duke. And after they took me back to wardrobe so I could change my underwear, because um, I was crapping my pants with the Duke, especially <laughs> when you're going to say, come here, here's, here's what I want you to say. I, I, I'm going to talk. Wait, wait a minute. I, I don't do what I want here. <laughs> So he gives me, gives me a piece of paper. I take the paper. He says, no problem, kid. We'll do this after lunch. You got plenty of time. We go back after lunch. He says, uh, kid, come here. Oh, so he says, uh, uh, let me hear the words. So I said, what he gave me on the paper. He said, no, that's, that's not, not what I want you to have. Say, I said, yes, it is. He says, no, it's not. I reach in my pocket and pull out the paper. And I said, yes, it is. And I handed it to him. He looked at it. He said, that's not what I want you to say. So he wrote down some more. He says, you got five minutes. <laughs> and that, it, it wasn't much. But when you're doing a line with the Duke, you know what I mean? It's a scary situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, I had, I had been to Burbank Little Theater, and I've done several, not, not the whole play, but I've done a number of scenes. And I could get through them, you know? It, was, mm -hmm. it wasn't bad. But this was scary. And then when we walk up the steps to, to do the rehearsal, Aldo Ray, who had been <coughs> tipping the bottle that morning, and that's the only reason I got a call, Wayne got mad at him. He said, get me somebody else in here. And that's how come Martel said I needed you yesterday and got me there. We get up there and he starts reading the riot act to me. That's my dialogue. He's, 
And he just really rang me out and said, wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't even know why I'm here, man. Just, you know, give me a break, cut me some slack. So we walk back down. So if you ever see the movie, that scene where at the table when they're all there, the guy that walks up with me, Aldo Ray, he had just given me crap upstairs before we walked in. Oh, they cut the whole thing because it comes down a flight of stairs over there, walk through all these people. And I forgot to tell you that when I came into the set, this red girl in a red dress is singing. And I knew about a third or more of the people that were in there, all these extras in their suits. And, and they're looking at me like, go ahead, Orlark. You know. Anyway, uh, that was another one. Yeah. And I wanted to work on some of his Westerns, but I never got to. Yeah. Just like Tom Selleck, I would love to read, you know, to work on some of his. But... <sighs> Um, I got a letter it, in the making to Tom, by the way. You yeah. got a, a, a letter? In the making. I'm writing a letter. Oh, to, to Tom Seller? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's another. I'm not going to tell you that story. Okay. <laughs> save that one for the, save that one for the, the book, book, I guess. Something's got to be in the book besides this is the beginning. I, the I, end I, in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> How about... um? How about working with, with Hitchcock on Family Plot? Do you have any um, memories yep, you can never met share about guy. that? You never well, met him? I saw him at, at Universal Studios when I was, it was something I think with Paul Newman. Or okay. Somebody. And they were doing a scene of these people getting on and off a bus. And I was looking for work. We used to go over there and talk to production people and try to sell yourself, you know, or get a job. Stunt Just job. on a daily basis almost? Yeah. Oh, that's how you got your work back then. You didn't have stunt coordinators that, you know, hired you. Uh, anyway, I saw him, but never met him when we did second unit. You know, you know what second unit is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's when they go out and do the, the running shot way off in the distance. You see two doubles that are riding horses off into the prairie or, or a car drives by with supposedly the actors in it. Right. They're busy you shooting first unit with the dialogue over here and the second unit directors guiding the rest of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was second unit. We shot the motorcycle sequence in uh, that, uh, what was the name of that movie? Um, Family Plot, I think. Family Plot, yeah. Yeah. It was a, a scene on a, on a deserted highway with motorcycles on it. Woo! Somebody was coming down to a city car or something. Huh. Some of these things I don't even remember. Yeah, <laughs> and I look at the check, you know, and it says so and so and so. And you're like, oh, I was in that. I remember working in that movie? <laughs> I don't know. Because some days you just go in. It's one day, and maybe you get to do something. Maybe you don't. You you get your check and say, you know, when the next day or so, or in the, in the mail. But you don't even you didn't even get to do anything. Mm -hmm. They got to stunt out or whatever. Mm. Yeah, not a bad gig. <laughs> well let's let's talk a little bit about Halloween 2. Um I know you you've told these stories a million times but this is the 40th anniversary year of that film and uh of of course nobody knew even then making the sequel I don't think at that time how big the original would still be all these years later much less the franchise itself the character of Michael Myers just just the whole thing um so when you came on, you, you're not only playing Michael Myers, but you're stunt coordinator. Um, so, so you're really kind of wearing... Cop number three. And, and cop number three. And I was thinking about that the other day, too, that you just reminded me. Um, you, you might be the only person to play three different characters in the Halloween franchise. Because you, you play two characters, technically, in Halloween 2. Yeah. Cop number three. And Michael Myers, yeah. and then you you um you're the assassin in Halloween three, yeah. And I don't yeah. think I, a few other actors have played two different characters in different, various films, but I don't think anybody's done three. So I, I think you might hold the record there in the wow. franchise. Huh. I would have thought <laughs> I would have thought that they would have given me a cameo in one of the later ones, something you know, a janitor at this school that Jamie worked at or something, you know. Yeah, well, I can't believe they shining that that guy in the booth. Who was the guy that in the uh, the booth when you enter the the place in one of those movies? He's a rap singer. What was his name? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, LL Cool J was the security guard. Yeah. Oh, that was Cool J. Yeah. 
Yep. I could I could have been outside polishing his shoes or something. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that, that would have been great. Yeah, I would have done that. Well, I still hope they they will. Maybe in 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 the next film, they're not going to do that. If if I hadn't burned a bridge, they maybe. Uh, you know the story of why I didn't do them in part uh, four, don't you? Well, no, not the not not really. No. Fred Lerner spoke to them about bringing me in to do Myers. Mustafa got word of it. He said, oh, no, 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 oh, oh, Jason. You got a guy's five foot two. He said, no, oh, no, Jason. No wonder he's got a complex. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but th then uh, Morga played uh, Myers quite a bit in that one. Uh, he played Jason in five for me. Anyway, yeah. So I didn't do four because uh, of Mustafa. He didn't. So it got bigger from then on. The, the character he grew. And if I just saw Jason, the the first one, no, three, three. I mm -hmm. saw it in uh, in three D at a friend's house the other night, mm -hmm. which is interesting. I saw a creature from from the Black Lagoon at his house about a month ago. Nice. 3D. You ought to see these. Have you seen 3D movies? This, this huge that is for, for 3D movies. He's got 60 3D films. I didn't know they made that many. Yeah, I didn't know there was that many. <laughs> I didn't remember Jason 3 being a 3D movie. Yeah. But it is. Yeah. Anyway, getting off the track here. Yeah, no, that's all right. That's all right. It's all good. <laughs> so Halloween, Halloween 2. Um, as stunt coordinator i've wondered how much of the kills was already scripted as opposed to how much were you involved in in kind of directing how they were going to be done like um you know did they have in the script a syringe in the eyeball and, and the face boiled off and all that it was all on, it was all on paper okay yeah. so that was all Someday predetermined. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put my script on ebay or something you know yeah, you know, <laughs> scribbles in it and stuff. So yeah. that was all, all yeah. free. Yeah, it was all, yeah. and we talked it a little about it, you know, and, and he said, This is what we're going to do. And so I just kind of fell into it and did it the way I wanted to do it. I mean, I didn't change anything really. Yeah. Dr. Mixter was sitting with his back to her. She turns him around. When she turns him around. He backs, she backs into the light, which exposes me. So it, it was simple. It was really, we didn't do like Jason does. Jason tears things up and yeah. you know, he rips people apart. And there wasn't any of that stuff. There was very little violence, really. It was yeah. very subdued, the whole thing, I thought. When I see it now, I say, well, it's like an old TV show. There's really not much to it. Very much. Very much so. You're right. Yeah. A lot left uh, to the imagination, to especially now. compared to to the way the films are now, nowadays. Yes, exactly. What was the hardest um, part of that film? Was, was it the fire walk at the end? No. Uh, making sure that I didn't run over Jack the Boys, who was trying, been a tremor. Okay. You know, the way we, we, the way we rigged that, and I had to depend a lot on Jack, and he's a heck of a stunt guy, so I counted on him. I put a... Uh, on the front of the police car, I put a platform, just being the front, the windshield's here. Mm -hmm. He had to kind of walk backwards in it, just at, to feel it, that he turns and steps on the platform as the car comes under him, which then thrusts him, he just thrusts himself over the, over the hood. Uh, we couldn't do that very fast, because if, if I'd have missed, I'd have creamed him. You know, if, yeah. if it had been off and he'd have stepped down where the platform ended, and it, it threw him hard telling. So if you notice in that movie, the lights are really going do, 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 do. That's because they undercrank the film a little bit and they they sped it up. You know, they shot it at 24 frames and or I mean uh, 20, 22 or 23 frames and then shot it at, uh, you see it at 24. Okay. And that just makes it go faster. We did that a lot in Herbie, all those Herbie movies with the racing thing. Mm -hmm. that, that little Volkswagen, even though it had a Porsche motor in it, 
couldn't keep up with those race cars. Those race cars had to kind of hang back, just like in a, in a horse race when the one horse is supposed to win, the other guys are looking up really well. <laughs> right. Oh, God. Yeah, I could outrun this nag. I don't know what. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want to run over Jack. Yeah. So they, they slowed it down, and that's the way it came out. You know, it, that's just part of the trick stuff, the trick photography that films are noted for. Mm -hmm. yeah so that was the most difficult um can you tell me a little bit about that that uh firewalk that that's one of the most memorable scenes i got my i got my arms singed here nothing serious uh <laughs> for the first time because we did it twice okay we had to do it twice they rebuilt the set the first time we came through uh how it was constructed, it was the doorway. It had fans. When I say fans, they're about that thick. And they're, they're two pieces of metal put together to form, when they fire the, uh, have the propane attached to them, it comes out in a fan shape. That's what filled the doorway. Okay. I'm behind that. They get everything ready. I got the suit on, they put the, the, the stuff that we use for burning. I won't go into what it, what it is. Uh, and they light me. I mean, they light the fire first with the fans. They light me. Then basically, if there's not enough, when I go through it, there's a lot of fire that does get on me everywhere. Mm -hmm. and at that time, because it was an enclosed top, we shot that on a soundstage. Normally, you're, you're either in a building that's outside and fireproofed, but we did that on a soundstage. And uh, it, the fire went up and went right out towards the cameras, which is really hairy. Yeah. It looks great. I think. At that time, it was one of the hottest burns because of the enclosed heat you know, uh, that anyone had done. Firestarter was pretty good. I mean, I, I did a good one in that. Yeah, I, I, I was going to ask you about that one, too, um, because I know there was there must have been. And that was filmed here in North Carolina as well. Yeah, the Hindenburg, uh, I, we came out of the, the nose cone like the guys that were escaping in the real Hindenburg thing, mm -hmm. we were duplicating that, but it, was, it wasn't a very long burn and it wasn't very far. You just, we went out and turned over and landed in boxes. Okay. You know, with the tarps over them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, but I've, I've done a number of those things. By the time you were working on Firestarter, um, I had the techniques um, and and had it advanced any by then, or was it almost, almost yearly? They now they have a gel that you can put on, and you don't have to have hardly anything. Ah, uh, yeah. You guys still put certain clothing and mm -hmm. liquid stuff, and <clears throat> I'm not like Hal Needham. Hal Needham was one of those guys. You ever heard of him? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, how is a, well, that's, that's a long story. Anyway, he was famous for hiding the secrets. Don't tell people what, how stunts are done and all that stuff. The actors, let them get the credit on the Carson show and whatever. And then when he got a chance after he wrote the movie Hooper and explained all those stunts on screen, with the airbags and the rams and the this and the that, Oh, yeah, it's okay to do that now because it's me that's doing it. Mm -hmm. See, I don't, before that, it was hush, hush, don't tell right. anybody. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it, and now, after that, stunt guys, stunt wannabes started invading Hollywood. Oh, we know this. there's nothing dangerous about this. You know, <laughs> that airbag, you can fall 300 feet onto an airbag. Come on. <laughs> oh, anyway. I don't know. I think I think there's probably still some danger involved in some of those, uh, <laughs> some of these films, some of these stunts for sure. Lately, they do everything on cables now. And, well, yeah, now you know you got a cable the size of a pencil, and and they just digitally take them out, take the cables out. Yeah, you put Tom Cruise hanging upside down from a building or right hanging on the side of an airplane. You know, he, yeah. Uh huh. I mean, that, that can be dangerous when I did, um, uh, what is it, Cat from Outer Space. Mm -hmm. 
the airplane stuff turning upside down, hanging from the airplane or whatever. Three months later, the pilot, who was a famous uh, pilot, Frank Tallman, Mance got killed on uh, oh, the plane when it got stuck in the desert. They, get, they tore a plane apart. That got one motor and something and flew it. And, uh, uh, Phoenix, Flight of the Phoenix is the name of the movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. And his partner, Paul Mance, got killed doing that. He got the plane off all right, but then it crashed and it killed him. Well, Paul, uh, Frank, who, who was really the pilot of the Stearman that I was uh, hanging, getting the kitty and the hanging, you know, I don't know whether you ever saw that movie or not. I did. No. Uh, I, I, there I was doubling Ken Berry. Okay. You know, uh, he got, he died, he had a heart attack and flew a plane into a mountain. Neither one of us had parachutes on. He came to me, he said, you gonna wear a parachute? I said, I'm wearing this green jumpsuit. I can't wear a parachute. He said, okay, I'm not either. So he said, if you're gonna go, I'm gonna go with you. But we didn't and he did later on. And it could have been that day that he had the heart attack. Oh, man. And you can't rehearse that stuff. There, there's no first aid guy up there to, you know, to give you some, I mean, it's just ridiculous sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If yeah. it's your destiny, you're gonna go. Yeah, I guess so. God's in control, then you're going to go. If he says, you, it's time, Dick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So far, like I said, I'm 81 years old, and he hasn't called me yet. So I'm I'm real tickled about that. Yeah. Of course, I'll be delighted to go where I'm going. <laughs> awesome. Uh, when, um, when you guys were... Back to Halloween too, um, just a little bit more, if you don't mind. And, and again, I know you probably answered these That's questions. That's really why we're here. A, a million times, uh, but yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a little bit why why we're here. Um, <laughs> and this is just again such a landmark um, year for that film, especially you know four decades of this. And uh, when did you realize what an iconic character Michael Myers was? Because um, and, and and what a big franchise it had become. Was it... Um, uh, I mean, God, you guys didn't know why you were filming H2, I guess. No. H3 either. Yeah. I was working... I had already done H3, and I'm, I'm working on Married with Children. Yeah. You can't see that, but it, it's a picture of the, the Married with Children group. Oh, okay. <laughs> Married with children, and <clears throat> Don Shanks, who I had never met, we're sitting around because we're bad guys. We're we're, we're doing a, a thing at the the titty bar is what they what they called it. It's when he took David, his son. I don't even remember his character name, but David Faustino was was his son. Ed Ed took him there. Anyway, we go to the the bar, and a fight breaks out, and there's. You know, it's a melee, and I get into it with David, and he hits me in the head with a bottle and stuff. <clears throat> and Don, anyway, he's he's a bad guy too. Oh, and he loves to play that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he said, "So you're Dick Warlock?" Like he was expecting something else or someone else. I said, "Yeah." And he said, "How come you don't come out and do the conventions with us?" I said, I don't know what you're talking about, Don. He said, well, Myers, you know, you, you, we have, they have a convention. And you come and you talk to the fans and you sign your name and, you know, sell a picture. And you'd probably have a good time there. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, okay. So I mentioned it to another stunt guy, Denny Pierce. <clears throat> he says, you ought to go do that. I said, I'm not interested in that. He said, no, you, you ought to do it. I said, I have no idea how to do it, what to do. You know, it didn't interest me. So he kept after me every time he'd see me and said, have you done that thing yet? No. And then mm -hmm. somehow Tony Timpone from Fangoria or mm -hmm. Entertainment, mm -hmm. God, I called him or Denny called him or I don't, I, one of us got a hold of him and he said, and then he called me. That's what Denny called him. He called me and he said, Dick, he said, we're doing a convention down in LA, down by the airport. 
at this hotel. We'd love to have you come down. You bring some photos or whatever. Just come and meet the fans. I think they're interested in meeting you. So I took the Myers character on a dummy, everything that I had, the scalpel, all the stuff. And I took mm -hmm. it all down there. I'll never do that again. But they started taking pictures and buying pictures. And it was, God, man, you can use it. And all that, I was overwhelmed because I, I had no idea that yeah. this kind of thing existed. Uh, I also didn't know that George Wilbur, <clears throat> we're on the we're in the same stunt group, Stuntmen's Association, right? I see him almost daily at the office. You think he'd ever mention that to me? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is more sh before Shanks told me. And I found out later, and, and I asked George, I said, how come you didn't tell me you're making 80, 90 grand a year doing this stuff? And he said, no, we're not making that kind of money. I said, my God. He said, I go to a show up here every year for a month. I stay up there in New Jersey. And he said, I make a few bucks that way because they paint me the same thing, a daily, a SAG daily. So I, you know, it's okay that way. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for telling me. I said, by the way, I said, in part four, because part five was finished by that, you know, that time. Mm -hmm. And I said, did, did you ever ask uh, or see, watch the movies to see what we did before that? To, mm -hmm. to follow the character and how, what he did? He said, I don't care what the hell you guys did. <laughs> it's a sequel. Should, should you be, well, Kane did the same thing. He didn't want to do what Booker did or Booker or he, any of those guys. He said, mm -hmm. Ted Wright was here and Booker was here. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I thought, okay. So I knew what he was all about. Uh, unfortunately, he could have he could have mentioned it, but yeah. to get back to the to the rigmarole of what it was, and and uh, no, I, it still amazes me. Still, uh, that people want my autograph. <laughs> We're tickled about it when when at Corydonville, uh, sign your name. You know, I'm important, really. It didn't, uh, but I, I, then I turned it around and I think about Elvis. Mm -hmm. I got an autograph upstairs. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan too, so I know what it is. Mm -hmm. I just, about them, I understand it. Mm -hmm. You don't understand it about me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's not about me. There's what it had seven, eight, nine guys that played that part. It's about uh, oh more than that. It's <laughs> it's a lot now. Yeah. It's not about us as individuals. It's about Michael Myers. That's what it, that the whole thing is about. And that's that's now I'm settled with that. That that's that's the fandom. Michael Myers. That guy you got on your back. Yeah. 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 He, there he is. And and you probably can't see, but right behind him, that's a picture of you and me from 2015, right? Yeah, right over the top there. But that's uh <laughs> So, so you and Michael are always looking over my shoulder when I'm down here yeah. in the office working away. You, so. that mask. you remember? <laughs> you remember? Um, well, this one is actually a uh, Trick or Treat Studios. Um, okay. They they made that one, and um, you know but, that's uh, Justin Mabry. Yes. Yep. A millionaire, a millionaire, yeah. selling his Trick or Treat stuff. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. They do great work. Oh, I mean, they're 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 like at the top top level they for the mask a making. Line right? that won't quit. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, and absolutely. Else he's working with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, do you have any theories or idea why the Myers fandom has? lasted and continues to grow i mean the 2018 film made a ton of money they've already got the next one done it's coming this year they've already planned another one after that to come out next year um do you have any take on what has kept this uh this unkillable killer <laughs> around feeding. this long and people they're, like they're, me still so fascinated over it they're feeding the monster the monster being the the fans, yeah, 
We want more. We want yeah. more. The fans are the ones that keep it going. Mm -hmm. As long as they have those conventions and these people that, are, that make these films know that if they put another one out, it's another bunch of cash in their pocket. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the fans are the fans. I mean, uh, why do we buy repeats the Righteous Brothers in my day or Elvis writers? He's so, and the Beatles and the, mm -hmm. the Who and the, you know, <clears throat> it's because we like what we, we see or we hear on an album, you know, mm -hmm. album, what's an album? Well, it's a, it used to be one of a, a big record. Well, it was yeah. a 45, <laughs> it was a big, but, and now it's this. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. They're, these people that are making the masks, selling all the little stuff that they have, the mm -hmm. posters, of it, they're feeding the animal. Yeah. That's in us, the fandom. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're a fan, or you wouldn't be into this. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and I, you know, a lot of fans. You said you know, it's everybody. You know, so many people have played Myers over the years, and and you're right. And everybody has their favorites, but I I do say as a fan, I talk to a lot of fans. A lot of people name Dick Warlock as their favorite Michael Myers. In, they do. I thought they just the, said that to me. It would be nice. Uh, I, I, well, they've said it to me before, too, so I don't... Uh... Looking at your shirt is the reason I... This oh, one is paper. Thanks. It came off one of the masks, and then this one is plastic, and I don't know where I got it. But it's, it's paper, but it's stuck to a piece of plastic. Awesome. Good. I've got two uh, boxes. Wow. Oh, the writing is smaller. The writing is smaller on this I've got two of the cartons that the that were in the in the movie, you know, with the logo and the yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I wanted to to talk about Halloween three a little bit too. Um, moving into that because you said you do um, still have the screen used silver shamrock masks or a set of them. Two, I have two skeletons: the pumpkin and the witch. Awesome. The pumpkin, I understand, is is the hot one. That's the only one that people really want. <clears throat> but if I sell this, it's going to go as a set. Plus one. The, sh now, the skulls are easy to get. Oh, okay. They're they're more easy to put. Because yeah, that was originally a uh, Don Post mask. Uh, I guess they all were at, yeah. at, at the time. But some were made, some were already being manufactured before the film, I understand. And then uh, maybe it's the other two that they started making um, for the film. You know, I don't know the, the history on that yeah. part of it. I know they say Don Post on the skulls mm -hmm. down, down the side of the back, you know, the, the flap. Mm -hmm. And I've never really looked at the witch or, or never, you know, she's got that green thing on and I never, never really checked her out. Mm -hmm. I just threw them in a box. It's a, I'm surprised that they made them out here from California. But she had stuffed those those uh, market bags, those plastic market bags in them. Mm -hmm. Kept them good. She tried that with Myers, with the Myers mask. But when I unpacked him here, he was here for probably 10 or 12 years before I ever unpacked him. And his nose was a little bit cockeyed. And oh, man. You've seen the pictures with, with the nose, of just a little bit cockeyed. Uh -huh. <laughs> And it's set up that way, and it never straightened out. I mean, could maybe have used a hair dryer and softened it and moved it. But I took it to Stan Winston. Mm -hmm. You know Stan, you know who he, who he is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took it to, to him and said, Stan, can you fix this thing? And he said, well, <clears throat> no. He said, I can't. And they did this before the, the foam filled stuff. They got a green foam out now that you can just dump in there and mix up and it'll fill the mask right up. You know that? Yeah, I, that's what I understand, yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't have that back then. He said, this is a foam latex mask, and, and they don't do that. They have silicone now, which lasts 20, 25 years. But it will go bad. He said, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll go away. But the foam just turns into mush. And that's what was happening with the, the Myers mask. That's the reason they, the pieces, you have some pieces here pulled off, mm -hmm. you know, it's, They've still got them, like the half a dollar the thing that they doubled up like a tire patch and <clears throat> for the 
to hold the air or the uh, knitting needle out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so they couldn't do that today because it. I mean, on the same mass because it just fall off. Mm -hmm. Terrible, and it's a shame. <clears throat> I don't know what that mask is worth today, but uh, Mark Roberts has it. He yeah, has you you sold yours to him, right? Is that? <coughs> yeah. A number of years ago. Yeah, he got the whole thing. He got the he got the boots, the coveralls, the the L rod knife, the scalpel mm -hmm. the mask. Wow. Yeah. Do you, you have any other um, memorabilia from, from those sets or, or any of the other sets that, that you keep around by chance? Did you, did you keep any other souvenirs? From many other movies? Yeah. I got the cutest little, it's a gold dog bone on a little wooden frame. And it said something like, thanks a lot or something, barf. <laughs> it's from John Candy and the character he played Bart in Spaceballs yeah have a watch <laughs> there, that's another history a little story <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you but I have a wristwatch <laughs> from Buddy Hackett most people don't know who Buddy Hackett is when you mention his name unless you're 80 yeah <laughs> you know well, a, I know who he is medium, but he was you know, mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> So he gave you a watch? Hmm? Yeah, he gave, he gave me a you a watch. watch. Yeah, he gave five people a watch. The producer, the director, the writer, uh, Dean Martin. No, I mean not Dean. Dean Jones. Let's see. The producer, Phil Walsh. John, the director. Dean Jones, Michelle Lee, and me. Watch. And, and there was a reason why I got one. It was, it was like a an olive branch. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a story that goes with that one. It's not a big <laughs> one, but it, <laughs> it's just for killing those, on, you know, on, on live TV. Everybody in the world sees this. So, so, <laughs> yeah. so that, that's one we'll have to wait for the book uh, yeah. for, I guess. Wait that's the book. I be hope one the book <laughs> comes out. That, you, know, you people will be wondering where the book <laughs> Um, just a, 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 of you people, I don't want him to cut this out. <clears throat> I sit here today talking into this camera to Matt on the other end uh, because of you, all you people out there that are watching this. That, that's the only reason I'm here. I'd be pumping gas at Ingalls Market or some, some place, Shell Station. Believe me, I, I am not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree by any means, or the, 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 the you know, the greatest tool in the in the bottle toolbox or any of that stuff so i am blessed to be where i am and i owe it all to you guys i really do and i am so grateful so grateful kathy and i both we talk about it almost daily how blessed we are and you're a big part of that blessing so god bless you i'm, I'm thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you awesome awesome that's great and and yeah i i speaking as a fan, um, and and I think I can speak on behalf of some of the fans, and we thank you for for everything, not just in the, in this franchise, but just your whole body of work has been amazing, and and uh, these stories that you're telling us today, and uh, and the other ones that we're going to read about in the book eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, done. And there's lots more still to come. Part two of the interview arrives next week. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss it. Until then, I'm Matt Arts for Halloween Daily News. Thank you for watching.